Get the test guide and the Gold Diggers Guide combo course for 40% off. Plus, get my 25-hour audio course, How to Master the Game, free this weekend only. Use coupon code GOLD40. We were into each other. We had a great time together, and it appeared she wasn't seeing anybody else. Until I got a phone call at work on a Monday afternoon that ended our relationship. Back when I lived in Vegas, I was in a really, really serious relationship with a Latina girl for about a year or so. Uh, her name was Christiana, and she was exquisite. Beautiful girl, 23 years old, long, thick black hair, gorgeous face, perfect body. Her butt was out of this world hot. Uh, she had nice perky boobs the whole nine. Like the kind of girl who could date anybody she wanted, male or female. And the reason I knew this is because she got hit on by both genders when we were out. Now, she did have a small foot tattoo and a small wrist tattoo, but really other than that, she is easily one of the hottest girls I've ever actually committed to. I've hooked up with plenty of solid tens, but after having dated about, I don't know, half dozen strippers or so and getting cheated on by every single one of them, I finally learned that, well, nines and tens are community property. They belong to the game. Have your fun with these girls, but do not commit. Anyway, if not for Christiana's tattoos, she'd probably be somewhere between, I don't know, a hard nine and maybe a soft 10. I mean, this girl was hot. So our relationship started like most seem to these days, and that is just casual bed buddies. Uh, I met her at a house party out in Henderson. I was inside with my buddies having a few beers. She was out on the porch drinking tequila with her girlfriends. Everybody was out having a good time. Well, obviously, I knew I wanted her the minute I saw her. So I walked out onto the porch where she and her friends were, and I said to the group, go inside for a while. I'm gonna hit on your friend here and see if she's interested in being one of my wives. They all laughed, including <laughs> Christiana. Now, they all knew exactly who I was talking about because she was easily the hottest looking of the bunch. She was the best looking girl there. So they said, okay, and they all went inside. So when we were finally alone, I said to her, you know, I was kidding about the wives thing. I'd rather you be one of my girlfriends. And she responded with, well, I was thinking about making you one of my boyfriends too. I smiled back and said, I got bad news for you, sweet cheeks. I don't share. She said, good, because neither do I. And it was on from there. It didn't take long before we were in a full on relationship. We got along great and the sex was incredible, which was kind of surprised to me because sex with super hot girls is usually pretty average at best. She liked that I was always in control and made all the decisions so that she could do what girls do, which was relax, be hot, and take good care of me. I mean, this girl completely submitted to me. We really, really liked each other and it was obvious to everyone around us. Now, we were friends with benefits for about three weeks before she told me one night, I'm not seeing anybody else. I hope that means something to you. Now, maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, but that didn't really matter to me because we were together literally every night. I mean, if she were sleeping with someone else, it would probably have to be at work because she worked crazy hours as a hairdresser. Now, I had a couple of other girls I was seeing on the side while she was at work, and she did find out about one of them, but she didn't really seem to care. She just said, Look, I don't wanna see it, I don't wanna hear about it, just keep anybody you're seeing to yourself. So we had what I thought was a pretty solid relationship. We were into each other, we had a great time together, and it appeared she wasn't seeing anybody else. So we were a very happy couple for the next couple of months. Things never got stale, the sex was great. She kept herself in shape, she cooked my meals, she cleaned my dinky little apartment, and she was genuinely happy to do it. So our one year anniversary came and went, and things are still going great. Until I got a phone call at work on a Monday afternoon that ended our relationship. Before I talk about that crazy call, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you want tens of thousands of hours of exclusive content not found anywhere, guys, go to patreon.com slash Donovan Sharp. Video and audio versions of every episode, including the podcast editions, which are free of the small talk, and the ability to see tomorrow's video today are just the tip of the iceberg. Join our community of over 1,500 men who strive to live lives of unapologetic masculine dominance at patreon.com slash Donovan Sharp. Link in description. Okay, let's get back to my story here. So we're gonna rewind about nine months or so and get some background as to why this phone call ended things between us. Christiana was on the shot for birth control. She was on depot. She wanted to stop using condoms at about the three month mark of our relationship. And of course I told her I would do no such thing. So like most girls, she told me that she was on the pill and like most men with my level of awareness, I told her I didn't care. I'm still wrapping up. She continued on with the female playbook and said, Don't you trust me? 
I said, look, sweetie, I don't trust anybody. <gasps> don't take it personally, but I don't want kids. If this is a deal breaker for you, that's fine with me. I told her, I said, look, I like you a lot. And if we part ways, it's gonna hurt. I'm not gonna lie. But this is something I will not compromise on, even if it means we have to break up. So she said, oh, no, 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 I don't want kids either. So I said, okay, so what's the problem? Well, she says, well, I just wanna feel closer to you and have better sex. You take way too long to, well, go. Sex feels a lot better without condoms, right? I said, well, of course it does, but it feels a lot better when you know you can't get the girl pregnant. So she says, okay, okay, what if I do this? What if I let you watch me take the pill every day? Would you do it then? I laughed and said, <laughs> hell no. And that was the end of that, or so I thought. So the next day she calls me up and says, I'm coming to pick you up, I have a surprise for you. So I said, all right, cool. Now I was thinking she was gonna take me to lunch or take me to the mall to buy me a new shirt or something because she was always doing this kind of stuff for me. She never drove her car unless she was treating me to something but she ended up taking me to a doctor's office. When we pulled into the parking lot, I said, what are we here for? I honestly had no idea what was happening. She said, I'm going on the shot and I want you to be here when it's administered. Now I'm gonna be honest guys, this shocked me. I've been with a lot of girls in a lot of different situations, but I've never had a girl do this. I've had plenty of girls tell me that they were on the pill or the shot or had an IUD or whatever, but knowing women like I do, I never took them at their word and just threw caution to the wind. Yes, I will admit that there were quite a few one night stands I had with girls I picked up at a casino or a bar or a club or the strip and wasn't as responsible as I should have been. But as far as I know, I don't have any kids, at least none that I know of. And the reason for this is that I always wrapped up when I was hooking up with my girlfriends, friends with benefits and so forth. But here this girl was offering to relieve any and all doubt I had as to the status of her birth control. And like I said, this had never happened before, at least not on this level. So I told her, this is not going to make a difference. I'm still not going to have unprotected sex with you. Now, something <laughs> in my voice and face must have told her that I wasn't being completely honest. I didn't make a decision to abandon the use of condoms right then and there, but I wasn't necessarily ruling it out either. I mean, if this girl really was going to let me watch the needle go into her arm every few months, to make sure she couldn't get pregnant, then maybe I could, at the very least, reconsider my position. So Christiana, who correctly read my body language and knew that I was at the very least thinking about her proposal says, okay, no problem, no pressure, but I would like for you to come in with me to these appointments every few months anyway, so that you can see for yourself in case you decide to change your mind. She continues, she said, you can ask all the questions you want and I'll give the doctor permission to give you my medical information about my birth control. I'll give them your phone number, you'll have complete access. So the doctor gives her her depot shot. I see the needle go in and I see the plunger go down. After that, I asked a bunch of questions. How long did the depot shot prevent pregnancy? How long does it take to take effect? And so on and so forth. And two weeks after she got the shot, I stopped using condoms. And like clockwork, every three months, we went to her doctor's office and Christiana got her shot. We never had any pregnancy scares. Everything was solid. Now let's fast forward to the Friday before I got the phone call on Monday. Christiana had an appointment to get her depot shot but I couldn't make it because I had to work. My car was in the shop, but I'd been to her last three or four appointments and figured, okay, I'll let her go alone and I'll make her show me the paperwork, the receipt and all the rest of that. So she comes and she picks me up from work that afternoon and I saw the same medical tape and gauze pad on her arm as they had at the doctor's office. Same size, same color, same everything. As soon as I saw that, that was enough to verify that she had indeed gotten her shot. Now, the reason I didn't ask her to produce any of the paperwork is because I was distracted on account of one of the girls I was sleeping with at work who started to act up. And for the record, guys, do not sleep with your coworkers. I have made this mistake many, many times, and in the end, it's just not worth it. Thankfully, I worked at a call center, so that thing blowing up didn't cost me my job. Anyway, the drama at work caused a lapse in concentration, and because of that, Christiana's tape and gauze pad was all I needed to see. I just wanted to get the hell out of the office and go home and enjoy my weekend. So on Monday afternoon, I get a call from Christiana's doctor's office. I said, hello? And the lady said, hi, this is Lacey. I'm from Dr. Glom's office. I said, hi, Lacey. This isn't Christiana. This is her boyfriend, Donovan. I think you've got the wrong number. So Lacey says, yes, I know this is you. I tried calling Miss Cruz, but I couldn't get a hold of her, so I left her a voicemail. But I always make sure to call her backup contact just to make sure. So can I leave a message with you? I said, sure, what's up? She says, Have Miss Cruz reschedule her appointment as soon as possible. She missed her appointment on Friday. 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 Guys, my hands got white hot. Christiana <laughs> flat out lied to me, and she staged everything which was next level deceit. She made it appear that she had gotten her depot shot when in fact she did not. And that past weekend, guys, she was insatiable. 
We fooled around at least a dozen times that weekend, and that might even be a conservative number. I mean, every few hours she's walking into the living room wearing nothing but high heels and a smile, and I would pound her senseless each and every time without a condom. Now, thankfully, it takes about 14 weeks for the depot shot to completely wear off, and that weekend was number 13, so I was in the clear. Christiana, however, was not. I called her up, aired her out, and dumped her. Never hooked up with her again, never called her again, <gasps> blocked her number, never saw her again. That was that. Guys, that's the closest I came to getting trapped with a kid by a woman. Now, I'm sure I've been closer, and who knows? Maybe I do have an illegitimate kid or two running around Vegas. I'll never know. But that was the last time I was careless about birth control on either end. But think about that for a minute, guys. If Dr. Glom's receptionist doesn't call me, my life will be very different. I'm probably still living in Vegas. I probably have a kid. I probably have baby mama drama. I mean, this would have changed the entire trajectory of my life. Maybe TSR Live comes into existence, but probably not, because now I've got a kid to take care of and support. Guys, there are many factors that played a role in getting to this point in my life with my podcast, books, courses, and so forth. Obviously, I'm driven and hyper-focused. I work extremely hard. I put in crazy hours. I don't cut corners. I know what I'm talking about because of my life experience, and I possess a rare combination of abilities being able to both talk and write exceptionally well. But Lacey Scott may very well have saved my life when she called me. Guys, I've dodged many bullets in my life. If the pendulum swings the other way in any of these situations, my life would be very different. But Lacey could be one of the most important indirect reasons my life is awesome today. Get the test guide and the gold diggers guide combo course for 40% off. Plus get my 25 hour audio course, how to master the game free this weekend only use coupon code gold 40.